He owns a gas station. He's written books. But now he is like this TV celebrity personality. Please welcome my dear friend, Mr. Dave Nassani! Uba! I got this. They, my buddy, are yours. Thank you. I receive it. <laughs> oh, I like that picture. Wow. Rockstar Marketing Bootcamp Main Stage. What a privilege. What a joy to be here. Thank you, Craig. And how many here have never seen me or heard me speak? Wow. Where are these people coming from, Craig? Well, I'm Dave Nassani, as he said. What did he say? <laughs> and I'm a caregiver. I feel like Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm, I'm a caregiver. Yeah, it's a deadly occupation, actually. 30% of them die before their loved ones do. But I had the great privilege of speaking on this stage. And I also want to share my story. I've had the great privilege of speaking at the Harvard Club of Boston, sharing the stage with Suzanne Summers. Also had the privilege of speaking at the Harvard Faculty Club, sharing the stage with Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, that Caitlyn. <laughs> and the Harvard Club of New York City. I'm just going to go through this really quickly. NASDAQ market site in Times Square. We had our picture on the Jumbotron. My wife and I, our book cover in Times Square. And this is our very first television appearance in Palm Springs, NBC, with my beautiful wife by my side. That was the first time she came on with me. She doesn't like to come on all of the places because some of the places aren't very fun, you know, like Des Moines, Iowa. Nothing against Des Moines or Roanoke, Virginia or, you know, some other places in the Midwest. So I've actually been on 25 morning shows all across the country from Washington, D.C., shown here, to my second home, Hawaii, which she likes to go to. And I just got to tell you, I'm having a great time. It is so much fun traveling, especially traveling with my wife. I'm 65 years old. I mean, how much longer have I got? And my wife, uh, she robbed the cradle. She's 74, going to be 75 in a few months. And she looks great. Even for her age, she looks great. And we just don't know how much longer we can travel for, you know? So we're just living life as if it was the last year of our life. Because it might be. My wife had a stroke 22 years ago. Oh, before I tell that story, let me just talk about uh, some of the guys that we meet in the green room, some celebrities. This is this crazy guy, Steve-O, from the Jackass HBO, and I met guys who were contestants on Survivor. But it wasn't always that way. This was me seven years ago. I mean, this is my family. I've been a member of Craig's Mastermind for seven years. And I was just a normal, mild-mannered guy. Dave owned a gas station, cared for his elderly. Elderly, I'm sorry. Sorry, Charlene. Cared for his disabled wife. And I own a gas station, still do, 40 years. And that gas station is doing very well now. And it allows me to travel. We go to Hawaii uh, twice a year. And since we've been doing that, you know, I have people to run the station. So I'm, I'm doing pretty well, and I'm very thankful for that. And there we are in Hawaii. But I want to begin my story way back to when we got married. Here we are 43 years ago. We look pretty good, don't we? I was just a child, as you can see. <clears throat> I don't look like that anymore, but she kind of still looks like that. And we raised our three daughters. We had a fairy tale, storybook romance, courtship and marriage. And two of the daughters were from Charlene's previous marriage. And then we had one together, the baby. And we got him out of the house and we got them all married off, each one twice. And now we have seven grandchildren. And I gotta tell you, 
we were getting ready to enter into the emptiness phase of life. You know, where you have all that responsibility is gone, the kids are gone, and we have just time, little money. And then one day, my beautiful wife complains to me, come on, complains to me about a headache. Now that's not my wife. <laughs> the headache of her life, she said, lasted three days, it just wouldn't go away. And I mean, we didn't think much about it at first, it was only a headache. But then, on that fourth morning, she wakes me up from a dead sleep, and she wants me to massage her head, because the headache got worse. So I'm massaging her head, and while I'm doing it, I notice that your side of her face just started drooping like that. I said, oh my God, I'm calling an ambulance. Well, by the time the ambulance arrived, my beautiful wife, Charlene, suffered a massive stroke, and it left her severely speech impaired and paralyzed on the right side. And in that moment, I suddenly realized those last words that I heard her say, Dave, massage my head. Would be the last sentence that I would ever hear come out of her mouth. I also realized that I suddenly had something in common with Henry Winkler, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Hillary Clinton, and Queen Latifah. <laughs> All caregivers. Well, I gotta tell you, I made a lot of mistakes as a caregiver. And the next two years was like a living hell for both of us. Charlene became angry and bitter most of the time because she was grieving her loss. <laughs> And then I became angry and bitter because I was grieving my loss. I just didn't know what to do. I felt guilty most of the time. I remember screaming out to God one time, I can't take this anymore! So I sat down and I wrote my wife a letter. I said, Charlene, why are you so mean to me? It's so hard being your husband, taking care of you 24-7 not feeling any love or appreciation in return. I know it's hard on you, but you're making it even harder on me to care for you. I just don't think I can be with you anymore. I mean, I'll take care of you financially, but I just can't be with you. You know, I read that letter over and over again. I just didn't have the heart to give it to her. I, I couldn't. This was the mother of my children, the soulmate, the one I married 21 years ago. So I just decided to go on in my depression and my hopelessness, keep it all inside, until one day I find a business card in my pocket. I don't remember how it got there, who gave it to me, but it was inviting me to a caregiver support group. <laughs> I didn't even know what a caregiver was, let alone a support group. And I figured if somebody gave this to me, maybe I should go. So I went, and everything changed for me. I met people there who were just like me, burned out caregivers. I learned if I didn't take care of me, I couldn't take care of Charlene. Well, those are painful times. It, it seemed like forever. It lasted a couple of years, maybe even two and a half years. <sighs> you know, I learned that the airlines, or I should say I remembered that the airlines told us in the event of an emergency, put your oxygen mask on first. Wow, there's an amazing metaphor, huh? Well, when I finally realized that I was able to change, to my amazement, my wife started to change. Slowly at first, she started becoming her old self again. And then our love was rekindled. And now she still can't talk, but she can communicate non-verbally through Pictionary and charades, <laughs> two games I hate, by the way, but I'm learning to love. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. And she still can't walk. But we bought her this power wheelchair, and she gets around pretty good. In fact, I can't keep up with her. 
Anyone who meets her for the first time is amazed at how she's like this one-armed wallpaper hanger. She's like a Martha Stewart and Wonder Woman rolled up into one. She's incredible. I mean, anyone who meets her for the first time is like, uh, she just makes us people look like whiners and complainers. And I'm very proud of her. She's my hero and I love her. Well, when I finally realized everything that I learned from my lovely wife and my caregiver support group, I discovered that there are so many other caregivers out there that are feeling lost and alone and going through so much pain and suffering. And I didn't want them to suffer anymore. I didn't want them to give up. Like, I almost gave up. So thanks to Craig Duswald, yes, Craig Duswald, I found my brand at the Rockstar Marketing Bootcamp Mastermind Hot Seat. I'm now Dave, the caregiver's caregiver. And thanks to Craig Duswalt again, he taught me how to start my own radio show, which has since become syndicated in all 50 states and 135 countries. I speak to burned out caregivers. Well, thank you. <laughs> thanks to Craig Duswalt, I learned how to write a book in 30 days. And I did that the first year. The second year, I wrote another book in 30 days. He taught me how to be a best-selling author on Amazon. I'm actually writing my fourth book now, Dave's Hammock Wisdom. And there's a long story to that one. I have a video series, Five Minutes of Dave's Hammock Wisdom. And he hooked me up with this wonderful girl named Cynthia Lay, who built my website for me. You've seen her earlier. She's still in here? Okay. And it's a membership website. So caregivers will pay to one-time fee for the rest of their life to get thousands of uh, uh, blogs and articles, hundreds of videos and podcasts and video casts, and a lot of tools to help them survive, because many of them will die if they don't get any help. And Craig also hooked me up with Superman. Dean came, and this was before I had ever been on any television show. It gave me confidence, it gave me experience. It was like a dry run. He did this in his garage, for God's sakes. <laughs> well, the greatest thing that Craig probably did was introduce me to this man a couple of years ago, Clint Arthur. And I remember where I was sitting at the time. I was in the very, very last seat. I think that's Joe back there, wherever. I don't know if I can see. Yeah, he looked up. It must be Joe. <laughs> I was sitting right there, and he was telling me how you can speak at Harvard. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I wanted to be a speaker. I joined Toastmasters, but I was a wannabe speaker. I never had the guts, never had the confidence to actually go on stage like this. And Clint told me that I could do it. And I heard this voice in my head said, you can't be the Harvard speaker. <laughs> you, you have a wife who's disabled. You can't leave her alone that long. And you have this gas station that needs you in case of an emergency. And you just spent money on Craig's mastermind. You can't spend more money. Besides, you've never spoken anywhere. Who do you think you are that you could speak at Harvard? Who do you think you are that you can share the stage with a superstar like Suzanne Summers? Yeah, these are the voices I heard in my head. <laughs> so I discussed it with Clint. And he explained to me that, you know, Dave, uh, you got to say yes when opportunity arises. And then I remembered that Craig taught me that too. You just say yes. You don't try to figure out uh, what, how you're going to do it, where the money's going to come from, where the time's going to come from. Opportunity may only knock once in your lifetime. So I said yes. Didn't know how I was going to do it. But I was still anxious. So Clint said, Dave, go to your wife and explain to her. And if she says no, I mean, fill this form out, leave your credit card number so that I only have so many uh, available at this price. And that way you're locked in. If she says you can't do it, then I'll tear it up. So I felt comfortable doing that. I'd go home, to talk to my wife. I knew what she was going to say. She was going to say no. Because she always says no when I want to go somewhere, right? I tried to follow my own advice and 
and uh, do things, but she said yes. <laughs> and so I told Clint, and he says, great. And ever since that Harvard event, I've been getting speaking gigs, paid speaking gigs, all over the place, especially in Hawaii, where I vacation. I got this speaking gig here at the Ala Moana Hotel from the promoter, and he says, he looked at my website, he saw my Harvard video, he says, wow, you're a national speaker. I said, yeah. He says, are you available in August? I says, let me check my schedule. Yeah, I am available, I can move a few things around. He says, yeah, we'll pay you, we'll fly you out to Hawaii. I says, great. And so I spoke at the Hawaii Pacific Gerontological Society, didn't even know that existed, in front of an audience of 300 people, and I did great. And then the University of Hawaii, the director of the aging department was there. She asked me to speak. This Hawaii State Public Library asked me to speak. And 12 other places asked me to speak. And they let me sell my books. I mean, it was great. And I got all this experience, all this confidence. And then I got back home. I applied to speak at a TED, TEDx talk in Wilmington, Delaware. And out of 300 applicants, they chose me and 26 other people to speak on the stage and share an idea worth spreading. And now I'm on their YouTube page, which is known for millions and millions of hits. I'm just so flattered. I mean, I'm humbled by all of this. So let's talk about what happened. I said yes to Craig, and I joined the mastermind. Then I met Clint, I said yes to him, and I'm speaking at Harvard. Next time on 25 morning shows all across the country. And it all started right here at Harvard. This hall at Harvard is where I got over that. Who am I that, to think that I could speak at Harvard? Who am I that I could spend uh, you know, some time with a superstar like Suzanne Summers on the stage? And I don't mean we were just posing behind a picture, you know, the way they always do. I was with her on stools in front of a live audience saying, yes, do you have a question for Suzanne Summers? Oh yeah, that's a, hey, can you answer that? I mean, this is real stuff. And so, this was the very first time that I had spoken on a stage. So much for the who am I that I can speak because I've never spoken before. I was scared out of my wits. And in fact, the night before, in my hotel room, that voice came back. Who do you think you are? You can't do this. You're going to forget everything that you learned. <laughs> and, you know, maybe you should call up Clint. Maybe he'll get you out of this. What have you gotten yourself into? I was just freaking myself out. And then I realized, you know what? God brought me here. I did my part. I rehearsed. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. And you just have to trust God, like I've been trusting him all my life. So I went to bed, trusting him, slept like a baby, and knocked it out of the park the next day. I trusted on this Bible verse that said, when you go before the judge, do not worry about what to say or how you're going to say it, for the Holy Spirit will give you the proper words at the proper time. They were all in my head. I just had to trust God that he was going to get them out, kind of like I'm trusting him now. <laughs> this is Clint and his wife, Allison, and they're just great people. I love them. Clint is a genius. He figured all this out and he's sharing it with us. Allison is the brains behind the operation because she used to work for uh, all the directors, Steven Spielberg and, and all the producers and everybody loves her. She never got the credit for it, but now she does. She works for her husband. It was so much fun meeting Suzanne Summers. She is so genuine and great. We talked about my wife and her stroke and the blood clot and how her hormone, uh, her menopause medicine probably caused it. We exchanged business cards. She's going to be on my radio show. And she talked to me like I've known her for years. And Clint and I, we become great friends. We vacation in Hawaii together with our wives. We do stuff together. And once again, wherever he is, thank you, Craig Duswalt, for inviting me to the mastermind where he laid a foundation that Clint was able to use and catapult me. And thank you to Clint. And I'm just so grateful. I'm humbled and I thank God. And it's kind of like boot camp, you know? Uh, business is like war. Business is like a battle. And boot camp, like Craig's, uh, Clint's uh, Harvard, will prepare you for battle. Will prepare
preparing for war because business is war. So I'm thankful to Craig, I'm thankful to Clint. They're both my mentors. And if anybody has any questions, if this sounds like it's for you, if, this, if you're really saying, gosh, if I was a Harvard speaker, it would change my life, it would change my business. I would be separated from my competition. I mean, how many people do you know who spoke at Harvard? So I'll be at table number 23, I think it is. And we're having a break now, so I'll see you. Bye-bye. Let's hear it for Dave Nassani. Woo! Rockstar.